This show from Windows on the World will reveal information which is in the public interest and will hopefully get you, the overtaxed, paying public to question what is actually going on. The Dartford Bridge and Tunnel on the M25 motorway in the UK operated toll barriers until they were taken away and a new system of ANPR was introduced in 2014. This has so far generated over three and a half million pounds worth of penalty charge notices for drivers who have failed to pay. The promise to the public was that the bridge was to be paid for out of tolls by 2003. When the booths were taken away, the toll was changed to a congestion charge and increased by 20%. This distinction was never explained, nor is the fee called a congestion charge on the website, but the new terminology clearly deceives the public as the toll was only introduced to cover the costs of building the Dartford Bridge, which, as stated, was meant to be paid for and toll-free by 2003. This appears to be manipulation to fit in with the low emission zone and congestion charge agenda being extended massively by the corporate puppet London Mayor Sadiq Khan. Since November 2014, motorists have had to pay remotely, online, at retail outlets or by phone. This discriminates against people who may not use computers. A single journey for a car costs £2.50 and there is a penalty charge of £70 if this goes unpaid. That is reduced to £35 if paid within two weeks but increases to £105 after four weeks. Now this is way out of proportion and it's in line with the charging for parking tickets. A series of complaints reveals cameras misreading number plates and people being pursued for fines they do not owe. 80% of appeals were upheld, but only 1 in 25 motorists actually appeals a fine. If the public have paid for this bridge, why has the price toll price gone up? And why are we still paying for it? French company Sanef, which runs the tolls along with Highways England, also operates French toll roads. As the plan for the UK is more toll roads, this makes sense. Is it possible that both French and British drivers will be stopped on toll roads here and in France and have their cars taken by bailiffs for outstanding fines? The successful model for toll roads is to have foreign companies in charge. Do you want to subsidise a foreign company who may soon be charging you to drive on our roads? In the UK, Police assist private bailiff companies with roadblocks for outstanding civil debts. Police should not be involved with alleged civil debts as they are not a criminal matter. The centralisation of power and cross-border policing of the population took a big turn into borderless policing in 2011. In that year, Eric Pickles accused the European Union of trying to wipe England off the map by developing a new cross-channel region complete with its own flag. The cabinet minister condemned the EU for ploughing millions of pounds of taxpayers' money into something called Arc Manche. This new cross-channel area, Arc Manche, is made up of British and French territories bordering the English Channel. Since 2003, Arc Manche has always been a political project, strengthened in October 2005 by the creation of the Arc Manche Assembly. Arc Manche is concerned with issues such as transport, development and maritime safety, innovation, preservation of natural and coastal environments, achieving a balance between economic and environmental interests and taking advantage of the position of the Channel in Europe. On this side of the Channel, this region includes Hampshire, West Sussex and Kent. This would fall into a larger UN plan for global governance called Agenda 21, which is implemented by all UK councils. See the article Big Society Change Agents at windowsontheworld.net for how this applies to what is going on in your town, city or village. This in reality is global local governance. So what happens to these thousands of unpaid fines? Many of which are due to the unclear payment system and the confusing signs. 
For instance, the C for the tunnel charge looks like the congestion charge zone and would be baffling to foreigners. The use of private bailiff companies who appear to be buying the unpaid fines as debts is a massive looting scam. This is because the toll price of £2.50 still has to be paid back to Highways England, separately from the amount that the bailiffs demand. The AA branded the charge as stealth tax against motorists, while bailiffs warned scores of drivers of in for a nasty surprise. Bob Carver of the Certificated Enforcement Agents Association, which represents bailiffs in England and Wales, said, We have been told by the three main civil enforcement firms that they are each expected to be handed about 50,000 unpaid charges to chase. About 150,000 motorists will receive letters from bailiffs after repeatedly failing to pay the toll. First time offenders are given an opportunity to pay the original charge, but consequent charge letters carry a hefty price tag starting at £75. Cross-border policing by private companies leads to unaccountability and that is what we're seeing with the Dartford Crossing toll, which should have been scrapped by our own government in 2003. It is interesting that in 2003 the bridge was meant to have been paid for and in the same year Arkmanche was formed and the French now operate the toll. This cross-jurisdictional power is exactly what the British people voted against with Brexit. Please leave your comment under the video and also let the government know that they are acting with a foreign company and third-party bailiff companies as privateers. These companies exceed their powers as we have revealed in the past and many just make up their own fees as their agents are self-employed. So, should there be mass non-compliance with this toll? It would certainly send a message to the government who are doing everything they can to get cars off the roads while working hand in hand with foreign corporations to loot and asset strip the country in many ways, including the so-called regeneration plans throughout the UK. Only a mass non-compliance scheme in protest of this betrayal of trust will make the government listen. Please leave your comments under the video. For more information and up-to-date news about what is going on in the country and beyond, please go to windowsontheworld.net. So Martin, what do you think of this? Oh, I'm disgusted. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just clearly looting. It's clearly looting, isn't it? Yeah. It's, cl it's clearly just inventing, inventing work for bailiffs to do. Where, where, where no real offence has been committed. This bridge should have been paid for. They said they were going to pay for it in 2003. It was certainly a great improvement to remove the toll booths, but they could have just done that by making it a free crossing. Um, I, I used to uh, travel across the dark for crossing every day, and the queues were horrendous. You, you used to put about half an hour minimum on your journey just because it included the Dartford crossing. And this, this congestion was entirely caused by people queuing for the tolls because at, at peak times it was just horrendous. There, there was just so many people stopping, even just 10 seconds each, the, the, the traffic would back up. So removing the tolls um, was a great idea. Replacing them with a system where you have to, A, remember that, that you were in an APNR system uh, and you have, you have something to pay. If people are uh, travelling, they're supposed to be concentrated on the road. Um, the, the, if you're concentrating on the road, you may very well forget that. Uh, B it is um, highly, um, highly um, dis disadvantageous to people that are not on the internet, that don't have mobile phones. Not everyone is tech savvy. Yeah. Um, these people have to find a shop that is willing to take their money. That, that's, that's a pretty inconvenient thing to have to do as well as everything else you're doing just because you have these, these money grabbers that just want, to want an excuse to make money where there should be no excuse to make money anymore. The bridge has been paid for, the tunnel has been paid for, people pay enough in road tax to, to pay for the general maintenance of our infrastructure throughout the country. So, so what is the excuse for this? 
Well, it's very interesting because the way I see it is this is part of a much bigger plan, this Arc Manche yes. and, and getting Sanef involved because if Sanef are running the toll roads in France, yes. I predict they will be running the toll roads here. Toll roads are coming. Now, this goes into a much bigger picture because, mm. especially with these fines. Now, previously, if you were French, you'd probably never hear from this company again. You, you know, Highways England would not bother contacting you for your £2.50, but with Sanef involved, with their AMPR, if you go yep. on French toll roads, is it possible people who haven't paid the fine over here yeah. will get stopped over there? I think this is part of a centralisation yes. um, with with these districts. So we'd be basically borderless. A lot of people don't know about this Arc Manch thing. No, I didn't. It's, it's, it's all, all out of the Hunger Games, really, isn't it? They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're destroying countries yeah. and turning us into districts where you have no real representation, no real... Um, feeling that you're part of that district because the, the bureaucrats in Brussels have just decided arbitrarily that, as you said, three, three counties of England have been chopped off and added to northern France. Uh, there's, there's actually a bit more than that because the whole of the southern tip of England is kind of a partner in the scheme, but mm. they're not actually members. Mm. You know, I just looked on the Arkmanch website and this, this is really quite worrying because they're obviously doing their level best to get people off the road. We know there mm. are too many cars, but the, the point is that the government is not addressing that directly. Mm. They're not stating there are too many cars. What they're doing is making it impossible to drive. So, yeah. they're, so they're bringing it all this in in a very underhand way. Yes. But I just see this is a very, very bad thing because with, with these partner companies, you know, what's going to happen is if you've got French companies running the toll roads yeah. here, we're going to have absolutely no recourse whatsoever. Absolutely our, not, our no. recourse now is being taken away because Highways England, the people who try and get through to them, there's many people who've been issued fines because their number plates have been incorrectly read and there's nothing they can do. And yeah. In fact, a friend of mine was telling me that he was trying to rectify a situation and they just kept putting the phone down on him. So the people at the other end of the phone at Highways England are actually just cutting people off. Mm. So they're letting this escalate. And, of course, once you get these rogue bailiff companies in, and a lot of them are acting in, a, in, in that way because we've covered this before, I've, some of the bailiff companies involved in this I've had dealings yeah. with, and I've had to call them out for what they are. And there was even um, one of them was uh, threatening me with the High Court, but they couldn't do anything about it because what they're doing is they're actually employing self... The, the bailiffs aren't actually bailiffs. They're not appointed by a court, as we know. Yeah. These are self-employed people who are, um, actually are on very low wages, and they're just going around clamping people's cars. Now, if, if there's any mistake and you get your car clamped, once it's impounded, you can't get it back. These people will not let you have the car back. And another thing is that... Um, if you try and cut their clamps off, what they do now is they actually report the vehicle as stolen. So the police stop you and you get arrested. <laughs> so we're, we're up against quite a lot here. It's not yes. just what it seems, you know. And also congestion hasn't actually improved Oh, absolutely there. not. It's, it's the same as the, the, the London congestion charge. It's, it, it's the, uh, the speed of traffic in London hasn't, it hasn't improved since Victorian times. The, the congestion charge for London was, was supposed to... Uh, just open up the streets to London, make traffic flow. Um, but when I do travel into London in the car, it's it, one, once you're inside the M25, the, the, the speed is, is, is amazingly slow. It takes you hours to just travel very short distances. Yeah. So I was trying to get through it a, a week ago, and it was on a Saturday night, mm. and they actually put the barriers down. I don't know why they're doing this, but the, 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 the traffic was backed up way onto the back onto the M25. Mm. So nothing's improved there at all. No. And this is just really getting out of hand. So if people out there are interested in maybe not complying with this, do put your comments underneath the video because this does seem to be very, very dangerous in, in the way it's being implemented because it's the removal of our rights and it's getting a third-party company in who may not have and probably do not have our best interests at heart. So thanks for watching Windows on the World. We'll see you soon.